It is evaluation season for the Marlins. They've just been swept by the Braves, but for September, it's all about evaluations. Lineups set five days in advance. Rosters, it's basically being managed like spring training. Boy, oh boy, we're going to dig into all of this on today's Locked On Marlins. You are Locked On Marlins, your daily podcast on the Miami Marlins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings from England and welcome to Locked On Marlins. This is your daily Marlins podcast with me, Peter Pratt. And of course, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, guys, at Mammy Marlins underscore UK. Hit subscribe to the pod if you are listening. Hit subscribe to the YouTube channel if you are watching. Hello, if you can see me. Hello, welcome to my lounge. It's quarter to 9 p.m. on a Monday. It's the Monday episode of Locked On Marlins. Guys, I'm recording this. It's an off day for the fish. It's Labor Day as well. I believe, in the U.S. The Marlins are just coming off a sweep by the Bravos, a weekend sweep by those Braves. We're going to look back on that series. Equally, look ahead, the Phils. The Phils are about to feel the smoke of these fish and the offense, no doubt about it. I'd love to play spoiler there to the fish, uh, the Phils, sorry. Equally, we got the Mets as well on deck after that. So all about the NL East right now for these Marlins, but we're going to dig into... One, of the, one or two of the other storylines that came out over the weekend, particularly, I was particularly interested about this uh, this Don Manningly uh, comment over the weekend about, about how lineups are set up to five days in advance by the guys upstairs. We're in that time of the year, it seems. That's very interesting. So let's start with the Brave series, though, guys. And uh, it's more pain, more pain for the fish. We were swept three games. Three games in Atlanta, three wins for the Bravos, three runs for the Fish. Boy, oh boy, one run a game. It's four games in a row where the Marlins have just scored one run. This offense is just sensationally bad. It's so bad. You have to laugh about it. You do. It's terrible. On Sunday's game, UK friendly. Boy, oh boy, they stretch it out as well. UK friendly. It was just like, how can you extend this? The fact that Max Fried was going. Lefty, Cy Young candidate, and we'll talk about that as well shortly. Cy Young candidate freed going for the Bravos, and he was sensational. I mean, okay, it was against the Marlins lineup, but through five innings, Max Freed, absolutely sensational. Didn't quite keep the perfecto going through five, but had a no-hitter going. Then the rain came, and I'm telling you, the rain, I think, saved the Marlins from being no-hit. Without that, without that like hour and 50 minute delay, uh, Max Freed, I could see just going right through up and down this Marlins lineup, you know, multiple times and, and no hit in the Marlins. How the Marlins haven't been no hit this year, I don't know. And actually, it hasn't carried through. I think that was the latest they had been, um, in terms of a no hitter, uh, which was what two outs in the fifth inning. So they've actually not made it past the sixth without without a hit. Um, so, strangely, a historically bad offense, terrible offense in many, many ways. Somehow, they've managed to not be no hit. And equally, they've not even been close, actually, which is, you know, maybe that's this is the game within the game, I guess, right now. So that's what we've got to work with this Marlins offense. We haven't had the, oh, the embarrassment. No, hold on a minute. We are embarrassed. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. The 5th of September, just coming off the a three-game sweep by the Bravos. And they've lost seven in a row. Seven in a row for the Fish. It's terrible. It's terrible right now. And, uh, you know, NFL kicks off on, on Thursday. Um, and then, obviously, all Sundays, uh, all go for Sundays now. You know, if people hadn't tuned out, then they absolutely will be now moving forwards. I would say, like, you know, football season is is definitely here, both you know, the NFL and college. So it's going to be tough for the fish. Main takeaways from the Bravo series, though, let's kind of get into it in this first segment, and then we'll we'll touch on a few other themes. Um, first element, Sandy. 
Sandy, baby. Boy, oh boy. I said it last week after the Dodgers, the Dodgers game. That's it. That's it. No doubt. Cy Young, Sandy. Not going to lie. When he gets blown up like that against the Bravos, and they can do it to you. That lineup is dangerous. Dangerous lineup. They love to hit the long ball. They absolutely do. And the long ball got him. However, it wasn't it wasn't maybe some of the guys you would expect, but Travis Darno absolutely piling in. Vaughn Grissom piling in. Um, Michael Harris piling in. Like it wasn't the guys that you would think would touch up Sandy. No, it was other guys. It is what it is. But Sandy now, all of a sudden, it's on rocky ground now. I mean, he's got to keep facing these tough lineups as well. This is it. The way the... The way the Ross is shaping up, obviously, he's going to be going against the Phils next time around. The Phils have just been, uh, I think they were swept. They've definitely lost three in a row to the Giants. I don't recall if it was a four or a three-game series. If it was three, they've been swept um, swept there. Then, so Sandy will then, I will see how it all stacks up. It's touch and go, really. But let's say Sandy goes, let's try and work this out. Sandy will go Thursday. So... He's then going to be, okay, he misses. <laughs> He's going to be then into the Phils again, maybe. Maybe even the Rangers. I'm not sure how it exactly works out. I think it'll be the Phillies. So I think he's going to have back-to-back starts against the Phils. So that's not going to be overly easy. Like offensively, the Phils are okay. Then it's a bit softer because it'll probably be a start either against the Nats or the Cubs. And then maybe back around to the Mets, finishing off with the Bravos. So there's a couple of, if they can, if, if Sandy can lock down the Phils, then for me, he'll win the side. I already think he will. I've already said it. But I do think that like all of a sudden, if Sandy rolls into Philly now and gets blown up again, that'll be three blowups in four games. And at this point, if if like Max Free just keeps rolling, then it's a discussion point now. It isn't, it's no longer unanimous. It's no longer a unanimous decision that Sandy is the Cy Young winner. It is now a discussion point. And where the Marlins are considered, I don't like discussion points. I don't like it because it's too easy. It's too easy to get the bias of the big team with the big name that's got the big winning record. The Marlins are absolutely rancid. They they are so bad. And it's almost embarrassing in some ways to say, hey, the Marlins had the Cy Young winner in 2022. Sandy Alcantara still deserves it, in my opinion. I think he still will win it. But next two starts against the Phillies, big, big. Do have to do my sums. There may be one in there against the Rangers. There's like a, a double header mixed in there. So I'm not exactly sure how it all line up, but I think I think it could be back to back starts against the Phils, then one against the Cubs or Nats. And I think the Bravos might be his last start of the year. Sandy Alcantara still wins the side for me, though. Pablo Lopez, Pablito, Pablito yesterday on Sunday. Um, okay, the rain came again, but Pablo was gas. He was out there throwing serious flames for Pablito. It was stunning to see. Stunning. Pablo Lopez still pitching deep into September. For many reasons, this is very encouraging. Firstly, I love Pablo Lopez. Love him. As a person, as a pitcher. I don't know where the stirrups have gone. I still want the stirrups back because they were sensational as well. However, Pablo, he's never been this deep into the season. He's made adjustments. He's managing himself, etc. It's working. It's working for Pablo. He's actually now... And there's been little periods, like everyone, where you have little kind of lulls in the season. It's not quite coming out right, so to speak. And um, But Pablo right now is back to being locked in. He's throwing some serious gas. This is so encouraging for the Marlins. For many reasons. If they decide to keep him, very encouraging. If they decide to trade him, very encouraging. Pumps his price up. There's always been that question mark. Pablo, can we trust you to go into, into September, October, November? Right now, for me, he's saying he is. He can. You can trust Pablo after this year. So whatever adjustments have been made, they're working. They are. Edward Cabrera. Eddie, again, another good start out. Um, against And against, like I said, the Bravos, top lineup. You know, it's 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 tough for him. Um, he, what did he go here on the Saturday game? Five innings, seven Ks, three walks. It feels like a standard Edward Cabrera start right now. Still a little bit wild, isn't it? Still a touch wild. Still young. He's, it's just about being a little bit more aggressive 
bit more aggressive with his early pitches. I think that's the key for Cabrera. Can he get up in counts? And if so, then the stuff plays. There was a stunning strikeout uh, that Eddie threw against uh, against Ronald Acuna. I love Ronald Acuna strikeouts more than probably any other player getting struck out. I love it. Absolutely love it. But Eddie Cabrera, it was the perfect one. He threw the gas inside, and it was way inside, way inside. Ronnie was jerked back, you know, getting out of there. You know, next pitch. So I think that took it to maybe the 2-2 count, if I recall. And uh, next pitch was a curveball middle-middle that Ronnie just watched go by. And that is to get Ronnie middle-middle looking perfect. And it was perfection. That's exactly the way to pitch to Ronnie. You go up in gas, get him off that plate. And then you throw the off-speed middle-middle. Yes, sir. Perfect to see from Edward Cabrera. So, Sandy blown up. Pablo delivered. Eddie Cabrera delivered. Great to see. Offensively, not much going on. One run. One run in all three games. It's not been good. It's not been good. Let's do the first out. I want to dig into the offensive guys and uh, the, the stuff that Donnie was talking about. Um, so... Ah, oh, first out of the day, US ad with a British twist. It's our good friends over at LinkedIn. As you gear up for fall, you need the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs, it's here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. You can create a job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network. It's got eight, over, over 810 million people. Boy, oh boy, it's huge. You can add your job and the purple hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. So your network can help you find the right people to hire. You've got simple, cool, simple tools available like screening questions. They make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience. So you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and maybe more importantly, hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. So LinkedIn jobs can help you find candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week, nearly 40 million seekers, job seekers, that is, visit LinkedIn. You can post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. That is linkedin.com slash locked on MLB to post your job. Yes, for free. Terms and conditions do apply. All right, guys, let's talk about this offense, baby. This offense is rolling. Another starter that didn't want to face the Marlins, Jake Odorizzi. Didn't want to face him. Elder came in, pitched another gem. What is it with this Marlins offense facing glorified long relievers? Not glorified. They are long relievers facing these dudes. And they're just getting completely shut down. It is just painful to see. Firstly, on the Friday game, Gerard Encarnacion. Hey, Gerard Encarnacion with a bomb. Oppo with a boppo as well. Love to see that from Encarnacion. He's been my favorite player in many ways in the last couple of weeks. But I want to go back to a comment that Donnie made that made me really kind of like, oh, okay, that's that's interesting. Uh, Christina Di Nicola kind of pointed out as well um, that, that you know Joe Madden had been talking about this after he exited the Angels. And as we get into September, maybe I don't know how long this has been going on for, but effectively we're now into glorified spring training for the Marlins. That's what I, how I would describe it. That's not Donnie's quote, by the way. That's my assessment. We're into glorified spring training, where it's effectively mixing and matching ABs multiple days in advance. Guys know when they're missing. They know when they're playing. It's like spring training. You know, and you can prepare yourself accordingly. Mix and match, mix and match. Who's in the lineup? Where are they in the lineup? It's just somewhere in some sort of computer somewhere. It's spitting out these lineups, and there's just no rhyme or reason to them. There's people up and down in lineups and spots everywhere. Why not? I, I, it, it completely frustrates me. Just. If there's a good hitter, just put him in a spot. Lock him in. I, I don't know how much it, it matters, these different spots and whatnot. But anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. Ah, it's to be expected on a Monday. But the point was interesting that Donnie's kind of calling out to say, it's the guys upstairs. They're making the calls. How long have they been making the calls? Craig Mish hopped onto Twitter to uh, clarify it for us. Effectively, Donnie's been given full autonomy, it seems, with the lineups for most of the year. And it's only now when you're into uh, assessment mode, when you're like looking ahead to next season, the the the, the guys upstairs, the computers uh, started to dictate more. So 
According to Craig, this has all been Donny for most of the year. What does that say? Boy, oh boy, there's some things that really bother me and have bothered me. It's bothered me. Listen, I'm a UK fan. Sunday is my day. I want to sit back on a Sunday and I want to watch the Marlins play good baseball on a Sunday. I want everyone in the lineups. I want them playing full, all, all guns blazing. Let's go. However, however, <laughs> Sunday lineups are a thing. And they've always been a thing for Donnie in the time I follow with the team. And that's been all the time that Donnie's been manager. There's a lot, a lot of roster moves and, and lineup changes that seem to occur on a Sunday specifically. I get it. I understand the catcher. That's fine. I get it. Okay. Night game to day game catcher. Absolutely. It's all good. No problem for the Marlins this year because our, our catching situation is, is good. <laughs> Who would have thought it? The Marlins somehow have addressed this catching situation. Not quite how they planned it. Nicky Fortes has emerged. Stallings, okay. But it's the fact that they they mix and match these lineups so much, rest multiple starters on a Sunday, and and the Marlins seem to get, get beat most Sundays. So the lineup's weakened. They get beat. It's painful to watch. I'm biased. I want these guys to be playing. However, when I look at the other clubs, the other clubs in the hunt, and okay, I'm looking at them right now. Look at the Braves yesterday. And some people commented on Twitter to say, well, of course the Braves are going to be full strength on the Sunday. Of course they are. They're in the hunt. That's why you rest the guys early in the year. Here's the thing. I went back. I went back earlier in the year to look when we played the Braves on a Sunday. What was their, what was their lineup looking like? It looked the same. Okay, you had a few guys in there. Like things have changed for the Braves now, you know, in terms of who's there. Like Grissom's up, Harris is up. Those guys didn't start up. Um, you know, there's some general roster movements that have happened. But you go all the way back to April and to May, look at the Braves lineup. Same dudes in there, same studs. I called it out earlier in the year against the Mets. Why don't the Mets ever rest anyone? All we get is Frankie Lindor hitting bombs. Pete Alonso hitting bombs. This is load management. What, what are the Marlins doing? Why are they going down this path of load management all year long? And then, so that's the, the Marlins approach. Give, give these days off, multiple guys days off on a Sunday and all the other days, all this load management talk. Guys, this year, when the front office talks to us, they'll say it was injuries that stuffed us. Injuries that sunk this season. But we load managed, and then everyone got injured anyway. So what does that say about load management? <laughs> it says it's a crock of you-know-what. <laughs> and I get it. I love to hear from a player directly. I'm, I'm going to try and, you know, not many of the, the Marlins guys are that active on Twitter and don't engage with the fans on Twitter anymore. It's sad, right? You know, listen, the season's in the bin. You know, it's all well and good to be up there in on, you know, in Twitter having fun when when you're winning. And I get it. It's probably not a nice place to be as a player when the team's not winning. But one guy, I'd say the most active guy on our on our roster is Jazz. So I'm gonna ask Jazz. And listen, Jazz has had his own run-ins with with roster management where he was being platooned and then rested on a Sunday. So I'd love to understand from a player's perspective, how valuable is it these off days? How much does the player want it? Early on, April, May, June, July. Does the player themselves, are they happy to have this day off? Are they looking for that? Are they looking to be off their feet, as maybe Donnie would say? I don't know the answer. I don't. I'm going to try and see if Jazz will, will help clear it up. And if anyone else knows the answer, hit me up. Let me know. But they've load managed it and everyone's injured anyway. So what's the point? <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. All last year, injured again. It's very, very frustrating. And I only, I just look to the best clubs. The Marlins, uh, you know, they seem to be trying to be a raise, but not trying to be a raise. And at the same time, if it was me, I'd look at the other clubs that are performing well. What do they do? What are they doing? And okay, they, they, they've got more talented lineups and, you know, whatever. Rotation, less so. But from a lineup perspective, you know, the Marlins lack talent in the main, and they don't compete with the Braves and, and the Mets and, you know, the Phillies to some extent, um, you know, the Dodgers, you know, all these lineups where, you know, there's a lot of lot of big dudes in those in those rosters, no doubt. But what do they do? They don't rest them. They've still got plenty of depth. They're not resting them every day. Swanson's not had a day off all year. I don't think Freeman has. I don't think Trey Turner has. 
What? Meanwhile, the Marlins, lacking talent, uh, seem to want to load manage everyone. And everyone's injured anyway. Doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> but nevertheless, what we're seeing is for September, you've got predetermined lineups. And it's frustrating, right? Because, oh boy, you've got to look at the numbers. And, and some guys on Twitter are doing this really well. I like seeing it. Um, where they're pulling out different stats. I'm not a stat guy. And so I lean on people that, that are. And, you know, we'll want to talk about it on this show. Uh, Nick Fortes as a catcher when he's hitting. Hits really well. Above average. Nick Fortes when he's DHing. The worst hitter ever. Worse than Mag Sierra. Worse than anyone you could think of. Eric Gonzalez. Devin Marrero. I think he's still with the Mets, by the way. What the hell? Anyway. Nick Fortes as a DH. Doesn't see who you're working. Doesn't. Don't bother then. Put someone else in the DH spot. There's other guys around that could probably utilize and, and use those at-bats. So we'll have to see how that goes uh, with, with Nicky Fortes. When we look at the, the offensive guys in general, where are we up to with, with Lewin Diaz? Big question mark there. Big question mark with Lewin Diaz. The stick is just not playing. I've been huge on Lewin Diaz for a long time. He's been mismanaged by the Marlins, but now the stick isn't playing. What are they going to do heading into the offseason? They have to upgrade at first base. They have to. They're going to have to look to address that spot by a trade or free agency. I'm nervous about free agents. There's a few of them out there. I talked about Josh Bell a few weeks back. I think someone else talked about Jose Abreu. There's a few guys out there the Marlins could, could lean on. They're going to need to. Need some production there. Lewin Diaz, I'm not sure. I'm not sure the production is going to be there. I don't think he makes the roster. And uh, I think he goes to another club and and, and maybe performs there. We'll wait and see. Okay. I want to talk about Miggy Rowe because this is all about evaluation season. Going back to this point about Donnie, I'm going off on loads of tangents today. Uh, it, it's, you know, it's easy to go on a tangent here with these Marlins. It's so frustrating as a fan where we're in September. We're still watching the games, still doing the show. And I appreciate everyone for still tuning in, by the way. And uh, had, had a great DM over the weekend as well, thanking me for the pod. So thank you. Thank you for listening. I hope I'm glad you're enjoying it. Okay, we know it's evaluation season. That's what it's called. We want to evaluate for 2023. Let me ask you this question, guys. Miggy Rowe came out last week. Hey, I've been dealing with a wrist issue for a while. I haven't been playing that well offensively, but I, I can think I can play through it. Ra, 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 whatever it might be, whatever. You know, yesterday he was pinch hit for. I think Blade pinch hit for Miggy. Donnie after the game, hey, yep, you know, we'll pinch it for Miggy there. Maybe it wasn't the best spot for Bade, but it doesn't matter. You know, Miggy, he's got a sore wrist. Okay. Let me ask you this question then. Jordan Groshans. Okay. We talked about him the other day. I thought he would be promoted off the, off the back of the fact that Miggy's wrist, Birdie's hip. It's time, right? You make the trade. You get him in. He starts raking. The opportunity then presents itself. What do you do? Bring up Dela Cruz, of course. <laughs> Why else? What else would you do? You'd bring up Dela Cruz. Dela Cruz all weekend. How many at bats? Zero. Zero at bats with Dela Cruz. Actually, I uh, don't know that for a fact, but I can't recall Dela Cruz having an at bat. So you've brought him up. He's done nothing. And then in the in the middle of that, you've then got guys that you know are hurt. You know whatever. If it's evaluation season right now, wouldn't it be sensible to evalu evaluate Jordan Groshans? You have to add him to the 40-man anyway because he's Rule 5 eligible at the end of the year. You've got a couple of middle infielders that are hurt. And listen, we don't need any more evaluation on Miguel Rojas. We know what he is. We know what he is. It's, it's not like we're looking for Miggy to catch fire. It doesn't matter now. His wrist is sore. He's, if, it sounds like he needs some sort of su surgery or something at the end of the year. Go and have the surgery now, Miggy. Why not? What are the Marlins doing? Get Miggy. Get him what he needs. He can then have a longer stint, you know, rehab-wise. A longer off-season. I think he probably needs it. Get Groshans up. Evaluate him. What can he do? There's no, there's not many cupcakes here for the Marlins because they're, they're playing against teams that are in the hunt. The Bravos, the Mets, the Phils. They're all in the hunt still. It's, it's not like it's softball central. There's going to be some big tests for the fish here. And so the numbers, you know, okay, it's still September numbers. I'd still like to see Groshans. I'm shocked, to be honest with you, that Groshans 
hasn't been promoted yet. I really am. I've no idea what the Marlins are doing on this one. Send Miggy to the IL. Call it a year for Miggy. Let's get Groshans up. And even and Birdie might be the same. I like has Birdie played in this series? I actually don't even know if he has. I can't recall Birdie playing. Let's, let me check this out while we're while we're still rolling here. Birdie, no, didn't play Sunday. Do you think he played Saturday? I can't remember him playing. Nope. No birdie. Okay, so birdie's been missing for the last three games after exiting against the Rays. What are the Marlins doing? Get Groshans up. Let's see what we've got. Knowing the Marlins, the Dio will probably be up next week anyway. We'll wait and see on that one. But evaluation season, evaluate the guys that need to be evaluated. Let's have a look at the guys. We've seen enough of Miggy Rowe. We've seen enough of John Birdie. We've seen enough of Coop. We've all these vets, we've seen enough. We know what they are. The Marlins have enough information to make the decisions heading the offseason. Here's what we don't know enough about. We don't know enough about Hayran and Canacion. We don't know enough about Jordan Groshans. Could he be, could he make the roster next year? I don't know. To be honest with you, I don't think we've seen enough Lewin Diaz. Some may say we have. I still don't. I still believe in Lewin. Not seen enough of JJ Blade, Peyton Burdick. These guys are all getting their bats kind of swallowed up by, by other dudes um, that we've seen enough of. So, with that being said, I'm going to wrap it up here for Monday's episode of Locked On Marlins. In the main, Sandy blown up. Two massive starts coming up for him against the Phils now. Can Sandy go back to back against a playoff chasing, wildcard chasing team? I think he can. I think he loves pitching against the Phils. And I think he he writes the ship here. Next two big starts are huge. Pablo Lopez is trending in the right direction, is putting together his career year. Edward Cabrera continues to trend in the right direction. No doubt about it. The offense continues to be absolutely turgid. There's, there's players we'd still like to see evaluated. And for me, Jordan Groshans is one of them. The lineups are being set five days in advance. Donnie... Donnie is, has no say now. It's over for Don. No, over. Marlins, Don with the Marlins as manager, it's done. It's finished. It's so obvious it's finished. Don knows it. Everyone knows it. Us as fans know it. Me, Peter Pratt, host of Locked On Marlins, I know it. Here's what else what I know. I know I'll be back tomorrow. It's a daily pod, guys. So I'll be back tomorrow on Tuesday. And you're all probably thinking, where's Sean Barrett? Where is the UK GOAT? think he's going to be back on Thursday just to tease it out he's got a few kind of work things going on keeping him busy this week so there's going to be solo pods there's going to be Sean and I'll sprinkle in a guest as well later in the week we'll tease that out as we kind of firm things up but guys I appreciate you tuning in today listening or watching Locked on Marlins I'm your host Peter Pratt I'll be back tomorrow of course on Locked on Marlins